In the 17 and 1800s in England, there were lots of stories and superstitions about an item called a hand of glory. Now, to understand this next story, you've got to know what a hand of glory is. See, it's made from the left hand cut off of a murderer as he hangs from a gallows. Once a person had that hand of glory, they'd speak magical words over it, put a candle in the palm of the hand, and when they lit the candle, everyone thought it would have magical powers. Now a long time ago, in England, there was an inn, far out on the Stile Road. Travelers often came from place to place and would stop at the crossroads and stay at the inn. And it just so happened one dark fall night that an old woman, hunched over from her walking, came and knocked on the door. When the innkeeper let her inside, he saw she was soaking wet. He offered her some food and warm drink. And she said, oh, I, I can't pay for your food or your room, but if I could just warm myself by the fire for a few hours, then I can go on my way. My, my son-in-law lives not far from here. Well, the innkeeper, he offered the food for free and gave her a place by the fire and said, it's time for us to turn in for the night, but I'll have the servant girl watch you and get you what you need. And he told the servant girl, when she leaves, lock the door. For there were bandits about. The old woman took off some of her layers, her shawl and her outer coat, but kept on a thick layer of wet clothes. The servant girl, she brought some food for the old woman. And then the old woman said, You must be tired, girl. Why, why don't you rest on the bench? I'll wake you up when I need to go. The servant girl, she sat at the bench for a little while, but couldn't quite put her finger on something that was bothering her, for she was a very observant girl. And as she lay down on the bench, she realized what it was. That woman was wearing men's boots. That was odd. And so, instead of really sleeping, she closed her eyes most of the way, the way you do when you're pretending to sleep. She even slowed down her breathing and snored just a bit. When the old woman was sure the servant girl was asleep, she went up in front of her and waved her hand, poked her just a little bit, and she didn't seem to awaken. So she reached into her bag and took out a withered hand, set a candle on the palm of that hand, lit the candle, then said the magical words, Hand of glory, hand of glory, let those who are asleep remain asleep, and those who are awake be wide awake. The servant girl wasn't quite sure what that was, but she saw the man set the hand of glory down on the table there and went out and unlocked the door and unbolted the bolt and pulled the door open and whistled. She realized what it was. It was a robbery. Quietly she got up and she took a running leap at the man, knocked him right out the door and down the stairs. She jumped up, slammed the door shut and locked it and bolted the door. But then she could hear outside the sound of horses and wagons and men, robbers. She ran upstairs to try to wake the master and his sons, but no matter what she did, they wouldn't wake up. And then she remembered what that man dressed like a woman had said when she had lit the hand of glory. She knew only a little bit about the hand. She, she tried to snuff it out with water, tried to lick her fingers, tried to cover it with a pot, but nothing would put it out. And then she remembered that milk has magical powers. So she gathered up some milk from the kitchen and dumped it over the hand and poos! It went out. And suddenly she heard the master and his sons yelling from the windows, pulling out their guns and bam, bam, shooting at the robbers who ran off into the night. And after that day, well, the innkeeper and her, their wife 
pay that servant girl extra every day. For it's good to have someone around who's observant, who trusts herself, and when there's problems, takes action. And that's the end of the story.